So in this video, I will just uh, dig into the rudimentary basic calculation about the recent government announcing uh, about $1.5 million cap on insured mortgages. So anybody looking to buy a house in Canada, especially in Greater Toronto area, the government says first time buyers can have up to 30 year amortization and they have increased the limit of insured mortgages from million dollars all the way to 1.5 million. So I'm not going to get into pros and cons in this video. Uh, this is just basic calculation. Uh, I have gone through one of the couples I met in the morning, uh, first time buyers, they just want to understand the numbers and uh, watch this video and make your own uh, judgment. So this is again for insured mortgages, meaning you are putting less than 20% down on a $1.5 million house purchase. Uh, I took it based on 1.4.19 uh, interest rate, three year fixed, 30 year amortization. So let's say with 5% down payment, you are looking at 75,000 down. The balance uh, from 1.5 minus down payment would be 1. 0.425 million and then of course uh, for less than 20 percent down there is a cmhc insurance premium which is $42,000 37 uh, which will be added to your balance amount so total financing amount would be 1.467 uh, and then monthly principal interest payment would be 69.30 per month so instead of five percent now Let's consider if you're making 10% down. So meaning you're doing 150,000 down, uh, balance would be 1,350,000. Uh, your CMHC premium will reduce from 42,000 uh, to 29,700, which will be added to 1.35, making total financing amount 1.379 million. Your monthly payment will increase uh, sorry, decrease to 65, 65. And uh, if you're doing 20% down on 1.5 million, uh, your down payment would be 300,000. Your uh, balance would be 1.2 million. There will be no CMHC premium, as you can see. And your monthly principal would be 5835. So mortgage payment would be 5835. So if I see 10% uh, versus 20%, uh, the monthly payment difference would be approximately 730,000. So if you're sitting on sideline trying to save 20%, which I encourage lots of my first time buyers, if you're taking a big mortgage, make sure you're doing 20 to 25, even 30% down. So let's say you wanna get your foot into the market. So the saving would be $730 a month. So let's take for example, you are doing 10% down, meaning your monthly payment is 65, 65. Out of that, principal would be 1,892 uh, in the first uh, couple of years. Interest would be 4,673. So folks in Canada, uh, interest is top loaded, meaning if you are getting a mortgage for 30 years, so first 10 years pretty much, as you can see, you will be paying more payments towards interest versus principal. So let's talk about total interest paid in 30 years. So you will be paying north of $1 million interest on your mortgage, making lifetime payment you make to the bank would be 2.36 million. So if you borrow $1.5 million, uh, you know, uh, that is the cap. Uh, you will be paying back 2.36 million back to the bank. So is it worth to go with 30 year amortization? Uh, so I made a simple calculation here as well. So instead of 30, if you say I will just go with 25 years instead, total interest paid would be 822,000 versus in above example, the total interest paid would be north of $1 million. So savings, 25 years versus 30 years, $191,000. Meaning, if you are taking a mortgage 30 year, uh, you know, remember, instead of that, if you take 25 year mortgage, 
Not only will you pay your mortgage sooner and faster, you will save at least $200,000 uh, that you can easily invest in your retirement. And now uh, rough estimate of your income required with 5% down. So the family income would be near $273,000. Uh, with 10% down, the income requirement is $257,000. With 20% down, your income required would be $224,000. So uh, folks, this is basic calculation, uh, you know, I did for the clients, but there's a lot of other parameters and factors that bank or lender look into your debt ratios, what are the debts you have, your credit score, your job stability, are you self-employed, are you, you know, independent contractor, uh, are you self-employed? So these days, banks are a little tight, but these changes would be coming by end of this year, early 2025. So what do you feel? Uh, do you think with the new government changes, 1.5 million cap for bigger cities would be helpful, make the housing affordable first time buyers for them to enter into the market, or they are just creating extra debt on first time buyers? Leave your comments below. This is Jimmy Singh, broker owner with Supermax Realty. Thanks for watching.